Good afternoon, everyone. Steve Hailstone here, giving an update from old Quaker Town, Pennsylvania. I'm currently on my way back from Bethlehem and uh, making my way through the small back roads coming through Hellertown and then all the windy roads leading into Bucks County. Well, hey, good news this morning. Uh, I saw, and then I, I saw it myself, and then I saw Carlos post something, and that is Spreaker now allows you to download episodes. And I think that's great news. I missed that ability when I switched over to the iPhone from the Android phone I was using. On that, you were able to, and uh, this just makes listening to favorite podcasts uh, more easily. And I know that uh, a lot of you also are available, your podcasts are available on iTunes. But um, it's just nice to have that that there. All right, so what is the update for today, and why am I coming back from Bethlehem? Well, the reason why I'm coming back from Bethlehem is I had a podiatrist appointment. Uh, years ago, I started feeling some numbness in my toes when I ran, and then, you know... I feel it when I wasn't running and didn't know what it was did some research and thought it was a possibility of a Morton's neuroma and um, it seemed like it was ever going to go away and well it, it hasn't so um, more recently the top of my foot like a midfoot sprain or whatever I had going on um, was bothering again so it's the same, same area as when I injured my foot coming back from the Dominican Republic. Well, the doctor thinks it is Morton's neuroma, and it's affecting the top of my foot, or all the way through my foot. So what I'm feeling, similar to years past, he thinks is one and the same. But he could be wrong. So the idea is to get an MRI, have a good look at it, see if there is a stress fracture or if it's just the neuroma, if that even shows. And then maybe um, he said he would treat it first with an injection, unless it was really big. He really doesn't like doing surgery if he doesn't have to. I'm okay with that too. It just sounds like, well, one more thing to schedule and one more thing to have kicked down the road. Um... Yeah, so that's what's going on. So today, the doctor's visit. In a week, I'll get the MRI. And then the other part of the update is what's going on with the heart. And that is, I I did update you that I was, uh, I'd seen another cardiologist. And I had originally scheduled the heart, uh, scheduled the heart catheterization, catheterization for um, January 12th. But I had a conflict so that seems better to reschedule. So now that is on the 16th. Hmm. Otherwise, I'm just kind of getting along. Um, we went up to Bethlehem on Saturday with uh, Wayne and his fiance Rebecca. And just did a little a couple of house tours, a little tours of old Moravian, uh, there's the Moravian College is there, and then the Moravian Church started there, and that's where Bethlehem was named, Bethlehem. So we, we took a few t- walking tours there. Uh, I For Christmas, I received a heart rate monitor, and I anxious to try it out, but I'm I'm not up for any running or even walking these days. So I I got on the old stationary bike inside the house. And I do mean old Turturin or something like that. Um, it has what seems like a, a big wheel, very heavy wheel that uh, it's like a, a wedding stone. Like you could sharpen it your axe and things on it. I doubt you could, but it just is like that. It's a big wedding stone. And um, 
the challenge that I found that I have is connections with the skin. I guess uh, if anybody else has any experience with this, I would love to hear your solutions, but it's getting enough moisture, I guess, to uh, have the sensors pick up your heartbeat. Aside from licking it, maybe, or wetting it, or I don't know. Um, I don't want to use gel. I just don't want to have to pay for something else just to make something else work. So um, maybe you can soak the strap or immerse it briefly. I'm not sure. So again, any suggestions? Also, anybody else have Morton's Neuroma and what did you do about it? would love to hear. Or what you heard other people did about it. All right, well, that's about all I have for updating you on this Wednesday. And the sun is now getting low. It's uh, still up in the sky, but we've had a real pleasant day here. Blue skies, but uh, that is supposed to change overnight. And then uh, we are going down into some colder temperatures for a few days. And then I think we're supposed to rebound again into nicer temperatures. So that's it for Steve, just entering Quakertown, so I will I will sign off. By the way, a couple of people, if you don't mind uh, praying for these folks, uh, two friends who were headed to the hospital. One, his name is Marty. He does all of our IT stuff at the church. He's a very nice guy. He has appendicitis, so his appendix are coming out. I don't know if that's happening today or tomorrow, but um, anyway, so he is having the appendix taken out. And the other guy, actually his partner in crime, also helping with IT, is a guy named Kirk. And Kirk was feeling shortness of breath. He's, maybe he's 40? Not even sure he's that old. Yeah, maybe he's 40. And so he went to the hospital and they found um, he had blood clots. So one in his leg and some in his chest. So it's pretty serious, uh, blood clots are. So if you would remember these two gentlemen, Marty and Kirk. And to make things work, I will <laughs> make sure I post this to Spreaker as soon as I get home. So, all right, thanks for listening today. Wish I had some running reports, but that's all the reports I can give you today. Looking forward to being on my feet again one of these days, but not quite yet. We'll... Uh, work on a an extra mile submission maybe maybe after I've had all of the tests we'll see uh, and procedures and see what where we go from there so take care you all we'll f- look forward to hearing your more recent podcasts as well maybe on Spreaker maybe on iTunes we'll see so this is Steve in Quakertown bye bye now <laughs>